Hi guys, it's Spiritual Path Seeker back with another video. Uh, today's video will be on the on Buddhism. Not so much what it is, but what it what it can be, what it is for, how it can be helpful to us now, and how it can't help us. So let me just start off in the spirit of Buddhist practice with a uh, with a bell. That's most uh, Buddhist sessions start off with a um, bell, and the bell is rung at different points, and it just reminds us one of the Buddhists of our home, our true home. That's what how Thich Nhat Han puts it. A Buddhist teacher from Vietnam that when we ring the bell it just listen he says say to oneself or whenever we hear a bell or when we hear a siren maybe outside or or um, any or, or we even see a, a, a red light and instead of saying oh I had to stop you know you know we stop we can say just remember remember my true home um, so he says when we, we ring the bell Listen, listen, my true home. And uh, yes. Something about a bell really, really makes one remember. This is just an ordinary, <laughs> I don't know exactly what it is. I got it at a flea market or for like $2. But um, I have another video on that, how you can use ordinary household um, items as bells rather than having to buy one for one, two, three, four hundred dollars $400 at one of the New Age stores. <laughs> So that's another video you can check out. But I started with the bell because it just gives an illustration of how wonderful Buddhist practices are. Uh, I've learned so much from the Buddhists. Um, I'm so grateful. Uh, so I want to start the video just saying how just saying thank you thank you to the buddha thank you to the three jewels they call them the the buddha the sangha which is the church really it's the group that you know, different groups get together to practice buddhism together and then the dharma is the teaching uh, or doctrine as christians would call it and uh, I'm so thankful for all three of those things from the Buddhists. Um, and the bell is one thing I've, I've adopted from their practice without being a Buddhist myself. And that's what this video is about. It's about how I personally, I, I can recommend so much from what um, the various Buddhist groups and teachers have to offer as far as practice, like um, meditation uh, and various techniques to meditate or various teachings of how to deal with everyday issues that we deal with. For example, how to let go. They call that, um, you know, we have attachment. And how, how can we how can we let go from attachments? Um, and if you look at a lot of the teachings, it, it really, uh, they really lead the person into a very similar place to what, uh, what Christians uh, would like to achieve themselves. And so many, many Christians have found uh, Buddhism to be a way to get to where, um, and, and, and 
a way to get to where Christians want to be. So a lot of times in Christianity, you're, you're just told, oh, just, um, you know, go to church and pray or read the Bible. But the Buddhists have very practical, down-to-earth um, methods and and uh, that can easily be incorporated into any spiritual life. And I remember when I was a evangelical, um, I was I didn't want to uh, go to uh, a Buddhist event. I was oh I had I had been somehow I believed this idea that it's demonic or something, and um, so I was scared. But I went to one, and it was so uh, helpful, and it, and it, and it leads to such a good expansive place beyond our little self in I feel it opened me up to aspects of God that I I didn't even realize before uh, so that's what I'm trying to talk about today just simply what some things we can learn from Buddhism, but at the same time, why I am not a Buddhist, why I didn't go whole hog, as it were, and instead it's it's Buddhism is an aspect of my my path, not the path for me. <laughs> um, so this is my my buddy. This is well, I mean, just call him the Buddha. Um, I don't know. He might have other names at some point. Uh, yeah, I got him at a Goodwill store. I don't know if this if he's handmade or what he is, but let's see. I got him for hmm, two fifty. Not bad. <laughs> two dollars and fifty cents. That is. Um, of course, if you go to a New Age store or something, they'll probably charge you for this guy. Jeez, I don't know. I haven't even seen one this cool. In the new age store but if they did um <laughs> this guy would be at least 80 bucks um and this is the buddha sitting on a lotus blossom uh that's an ancient hindu symbol and he's meditating he's sitting in in cross-legged and he's got his hands folded and and uh this is one of the things many buddhists are known for is meditation though there are buddhists who don't um, practice meditation and um he's my buddy and there is a, a tradition um uh, within buddhism that is has you whenever you encounter a statue of the buddha whether it's crude statue or a highly refined one made of gold or something just consider it to be the Buddha and honor it as the Buddha. Um, so that's what I do. And, and of course, it's, you know, we in, in, in the Western tradition, we have this um, teaching, make no graven image. And, and um, so it's an interesting contrast. And there are Buddhists, especially Zen, Zen, which might not even be Buddhism, but um, teaches, you know, destroy the Buddha statues and get rid of all image, imagery. So it's called iconoclasm. Um, and we know uh, different Abrahamic religions believe in getting rid of all icons. Um, unfortunate, there's the unfortunate story of, of the the, the Muslims, I believe it was in Afghanistan, who destroyed the beautiful Buddhist statues in the desert somewhere, and, and it was a terrible tragedy. On the other hand, it actually it actually goes together with Buddhist teaching because for Buddhist teaching, everything is impermanent. Nothing nothing lasts in the form that it's in, um, and so even those statues um, had to pass as everything passes. Uh, so it's kind of a, a strange confirmation of Buddhist 
teaching to have those statues pass away. On the other hand, um, the other folks see it as as reminder uh, that um, these these images. This is nothing. This is a piece of wood. I could throw it away. You know, <laughs> but it's simply a reminder. We we use sound. We use sight. Um, music and uh, art of any various kinds and and uh, as long as you know you know that it's just a it's just a uh, reminder and the Buddhists teach that we have an inner Buddha just as as Christians say the Christ within uh, Christ lives in me uh, the Buddhists also teach the Buddha within and somewhat like the Holy Spirit within. So those are the different teachings. I don't find it to be harmful to have this this guy around. <laughs> when I sometimes when I meditate it, I feel like I'm not alone when I'm meditating. And actually I'm not alone. Um, and uh, so anyway I I'm just saying so on the one hand, there's just incredible riches. The Buddha, the Buddha has. There are so many um, convergences between Buddhism and Christianity. I, I can't even begin. Thich Nhat Han has written a couple of books on the topic. Um, he really likes the Holy Spirit idea in Christianity. Uh, the Dalai Lama has also um, spoken in that similar way. He doesn't think people should convert to Buddhism if you're from a Christian background. Like he doesn't he doesn't think that Christians in general can convert. It's it's a different cultural context that we have. Um, but um, I really believe that that we can we can mutually learn from each other. And even in the Bible, we see uh, adopting from other cultures. For example, the just in the book of Genesis chapter one, um, the story of creation is, is based on earlier stories. We know, we know, for example, the story of the flood uh, was an ancient story before the, there was the Bible. And many long before there was the Bible, uh, there were stories of the flood in other cultures, in the Sumerian culture especially. And and the writers of the Bible took that that story and found it and adopted it for their use. So the same applies, or or the Gospel of John, for example, uses the word logos. Uh, this is a philosophical, a Greek philosophical word. That um, that a Jewish philosopher brought in to use of relation to the to the Hebrew God, and um, then Christians adopted the idea that that Jesus is the Word, the Word made incarnate. Um, so, in a similar way that Christianity used Greek concepts and so forth. Christians in our time have found a lot of um, meaning in adopting Buddhist um, practices and ideas. And uh, like I mentioned, attachment is, is, is just, it's very similar to Christian ideas. Um, Meister Eckhart, a German mystic around 1300, uh, he, he also used the word uh, how, how can we detach? Detaching, um, he used the term gelassenheit, to let go. Um, these are very basically the same idea. So, um, I I I just find it so helpful. But the difference with Buddhism between Buddhism, on the one hand, and and the cultural context of the West is that in the West we have this idea that nature and all that is 
is created by someone. So this, this idea, Buddhists don't have this idea of creation and all of this. It, 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 every, what is simply is. It's, it's there and we have to deal with it. And the Buddha, Buddha just, you know, he wasn't interested in those larger issues. He, he saw his fellow humans and himself facing um, suffering. And, you know, we, we all get sick. We all get old and we all die. And he, he wanted to become free. He wanted to help himself be, become free. And he wanted to help everyone and all beings become free from this suffering. Um, and it's, it's a wonderful goal. Um, it's beautiful. Um, but he wasn't asking himself, like, who created it? Why is there evil? Uh, it not, it's not his, he wasn't interested in this issue. He was interested in, we, we have the fact of suffering. How can we, how can we solve this problem? It's basically his central issue and he wasn't saying all of life is suffering. Um, I'm just saying that, but wherever there is life, ultimately you're going to have this suffering um, involved and ultimately death. And uh, how can we get free? Whereas, the, whereas in the West, in the Christian tradition, um, it's a very different view it's it's the view that um, suffering isn't necessarily part of life uh, a time is coming whether it's after death or somehow Christ will come on earth for a while you know there's different teachings on that but ultimately we will get to a place where we will live and, but we will have no tears there will be no suffering suffering will be overcome uh, Christ has overcome this, this problem, but not yet. So Christians are living in an in-between time. There is not a promise of going beyond suffering. As long as we're in this body and this life, um, we're, we're going to have suffering. And as a matter of fact, Jesus himself had to go onto a, a cross. It, so it's not like he did... He was not, not only did he not find a way out of suffering, he was, in a lot of his sayings, he's like, you are going to have to suffer if you follow me. Suffering could well re be a result. So Jesus does not promise freedom from suffering um, on this earth. Um, but the Christians believe that God will help us, will help us through every situation in our life, help us to make it through, and then ultimately achieve the, the um, salvation in him. So, so it's, a, it's a struggle. The Christian life is a struggle with God's help and with the help of each other. Whereas in Buddhism, that's also the case. There's life is a struggle, and, and, and Buddhists help each other in the so-called Sangha, which is their word for church, as it were. Um, they're, they're trying to help each other, and through compassion, they want to help everyone. But they have the claim that a person will become enlightened. Once you become enlightened, you, you, have, you, can, you can get out of the suffering. You have the freedom from suffering. And then you have a choice. You can become a bodhisattva, which is, well, I'm not going to quite leave suffering just now. I'm going to go back and help others. I'm not going to leave this world yet. I want to help others. Um, but then there's the other others who, who are thinking, well, I'm going to just go into the, into the nirvana and, and become free. <laughs> you know, of the suffering. But, okay, so that's the difference. And that's where I think Christianity, that's where I, why I say Buddhism cannot be the ultimate for me, even though it promises to be the ultimate solution. I, it's not the ultimate solution for me because there is no way out of suffering in, in this world. There's no, there's no way out. 
So we will die. We will get old. We will get sick in different ways. Even if a person goes through all the Buddhist exercises and does everything and meditates for decades and, and totally dedicates oneself to that, that path, you're still going to get old. You're still going to die. You're still going to get sick. You know, there, there's no, that is not salvation to me. Um, to me, what Buddhism can do is help people avoid unnecessary suffering and it can, so it can reduce our suffering and help avoid unnecessary suffering, um, but it cannot be the ultimate liberation that it promises because there's no way to ever, ever on this world to get rid of the ego, which is the source of suffering, which is able to feel suffering, which is able to see that it's going to die, which is able to feel pain. There's no, you're going to have that ego until the very end, unless we lose our minds or, you know, go insane or whatever, in which case, you know, that isn't liberation. <laughs> um, so that's the difference to me. I, to me, like the Buddhist teaching ultimately, now some of them do believe in a kind of God, in a kind of divine, and that is the Buddha. They've turned the Buddha into a kind of God who can, who can help them. And they pray to the Buddha and they have a kind of heaven that you'll go to and so forth. There's the Amitabha Buddha and so forth who will be a savior figure. Uh, and this is very similar to the Christian <laughs> teaching. Uh, it's just not quite... It's, it's somewhat like what the Buddha taught because the Buddha did want to save people. And, uh, but ultimately it's leading to, and this is the other difference why I can't be a Buddhist. Even if, even if it were true, we could blow out the ego and enter into the utter nirvana of everything, nothing, you know, what, it, what the ultimate goal of Buddhism is. The ultimate goal of Christianity is is love to me is love and so this means this means like the ultimate goal is not to blow the self out but it is to become the self it is it, it, it is to become the one that god has made each one of us as and that's the christian teaching i believe that jesus christ over and over again was looking at every person that he encountered as a worthy, important being. Um, that's why he made the statements like, you know, even the sparrow can't fall to the ground without God caring and knowing about it. And God has counted every one of our hairs on our head. In other, wor in other words, like, we matter. Every single person matters, is loved, um, forever because love is eternal that's that's the ultimate so this is why ultimately i i just i cannot say i'm going to drop everything I, this buddhism thing is helping me so much and so i'm going to i'm going to drop every all, all my other practices and just do this um the Buddhist thing because it will bring me liberation because one, it can't bring liberation because I will always have an ego. This, this, this enlightenment thing is like a carrot on a stick. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If you do this, you do that, go to this retreat or whatever. Ultimately you become enlightened. But guess what? These Buddhists I know, they never become enlightened. <laughs> they never become enlightened. And then, oh, well now and then once every four centuries, somebody gets blows it out and becomes enlightened or something. Well, I don't know if they really did. I don't know them. and I'm not in them. And I, you know, that's a faith at that point. It becomes a religion. That's what makes Buddhism a religion. That's what you have to believe that these people blew it out somehow and they no longer suffer like you and I or something. And I, I don't believe that. I, I think they will, all people, as long as they're sane, <laughs> have, uh, and a self 
and will always experience, be able to experience suffering. And so there, that, that sickness is still going to be there. You've got a body, it's going to get sick, and it's going to get old, and it's going to die. Um, so Buddhism cannot liberate from this. Um, and Christianity, though, offers a, and, and, and Judaism and, and, and Islam um, uh, and others, like you know, certain Unitarians believe in God still, um, and others believe in God, not just the Abrahamic folks. And, and within Hinduism, there are those who believe in, in God. And, and, um, and so the thing is, uh, that's the difference that the, the Buddha, um, so these two differences are the promise of enlightenment, I don't think is a, is a final promise that is actually can be fulfilled. And secondly, I, I believe the point of, of, of spirituality is love. This involves God and other people in an eternal relationship. This is so different than, than what the Buddhists uh, teach, which is to get let go of attachments. Don't, don't um, love is actually a, only a path or something, but eventually you you are to go beyond it and let go and whatever. That's not that's not to me what the um, ultimate teaching of Christianity is, um, or any teaching where God is the God of love which there's very many, it isn't just Christianity, or I, I'm, I'm just using Christianity in this video as, as an example, the contrast, just to explain why theists might not be able to become full Buddhists. <laughs> Even though Buddhists say, yeah, you, 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 yeah you, can, you can do it and everything, and oh, the Buddha wasn't an atheist, and he probably wasn't, but he was he was kind of an agnostic, as far as I can tell, you know, and he didn't it, for him, the question of God was not the it was it was a distraction, sort of it, the the main thing is to get clear and and to get out of suffering, and there was no God who was going to help you. It was your mind. Your, your own enlightenment will get you out of this situation that we're in. And that's the difference. I don't think our mind can get us out of it. I, I think it can, I think we can, I think we can, we can, we can um, lessen our, our suffering and avoid unnecessary suffering, but ultimately we cannot avoid the cross. The cross is coming. It's in our daily life. We're dying every day. And, there is only one. I mean, I don't want to say only one. There is only one God, but there, there, we need God. <laughs> there is no other solution. We can't save ourselves. We cannot save ourselves. Do whatever we want to think, however we want to change our thinking, change our whatever. In this way, it's still not going to change the facts on the ground. Um, ultimately. So I hope this video, I'll, I'll just close it up here. I'm starting to uh, say the similar things. So I, I, I think I've exhausted this topic and I hope it was helpful for you. Um, so the moral story is I, I, I really am so grateful for what I've learned from Buddhism and the, the wonderful teachings about peace and, and uh, compassion and the wonderful um, methods of meditation and the mantras and the, um, and the friends that I've known. Um, and so I'll just I'll just end it there and with a again with the bell um,
Namaste. Peace. Namaste. Hope this was helpful.